The United States is quietly tunneling beneath the ocean in Virginia, a 450-foot-long, 10-million-pound machine, about the size of a building, is cutting through the seabed every single day. And that's not all. They're also building two massive tunnels and creating two artificial islands to replace 27 bridges. 3,000 workers labor day and night in the middle of the sea. Locals call it the most expensive wonder in Virginia's history. But what exactly is this project? And how have they been working on this secretive endeavor for 70 years? Stay tuned to the end to find out. In the mid 20th century, the two cities of Norfolk and Hampton in Virginia played a crucial role along America's east coast. Norfolk was a bustling trade gateway where cargo ships lined up one after another, entering and leaving the Atlantic. On the other side of the bay, Hampton served as a residential and educational center and, most importantly, the site of the world's largest naval base. The two cities were only a few miles apart, yet separated by the wide waters of Hampton Roads. People could only travel between the two cities by small, rickety ferries. That's right, no bridges, no roads. Each day they could carry just over 200 vehicles, mostly trucks and military transports. When storms hit, the ferries stopped running, paralyzing the entire region. But change was coming. America's population was booming. The economy was thriving, and cars were appearing everywhere. Those once sufficient ferries suddenly couldn't keep up anymore. It wasn't just wasted time waiting in long lines, it also meant wasted fuel and financial losses. You might think, if there's water, why not just build a bridge? Well, the geology beneath the bay was as soft as mud. The tides were strong and Atlantic hurricanes could wipe out any structure overnight. That was a serious problem, because if a bridge collapsed, it would cut off Virginia's ports, one of America's key commercial lifelines. And even more importantly, it would jeopardize the world's largest naval base, the Norfolk Naval Base, home to dozens of aircraft carriers. A bridge crossing the harbor would have become a giant, easy target in any potential attack. Building a bridge was out of the question. But Americans never just give up. If we can't go over it, then we'll go under it. And that's exactly what they did. In 1957, long before humans ever set foot on the moon, the United States unveiled a modern marvel, the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel, the first structure on Earth that allowed cars to dive beneath the sea and then emerge back above it. Imagine this. You're driving through the middle of the ocean. Your car plunges into a twin tunnel nearly 100 feet below the surface. The daylight fades away. A few minutes later, sunlight returns as you emerge onto an artificial island built solely to connect the underwater tunnel to a bridge stretching toward the opposite shore. Each island spans over 15 acres, made from millions of tons of sand and rock hauled in by barges. Beneath the bay, hundreds of engineers worked under intense pressure, carefully positioning concrete sections weighing thousands of tons each. When it opened, the HRBT was hailed as America's engineering miracle, much like how the French revere the Eiffel Tower, or the Egyptians the Great Pyramids of Giza. On its first day, only about 6,000 vehicles passed smoothly through the tunnel. But by 2008, that number had soared past 100,000 vehicles a day, 16 times its original capacity. After more than half a century of service, the same old traffic nightmare had returned once again. In 1992, the state government could no longer wait. They assigned the Virginia Department of Transportation, VDOT, an enormous task to find a permanent solution to this problem. But how could they expand a structure that sits both on the waves and beneath the sea without shutting down the region's most critical transportation route? That was no longer just an engineering question, it was a $10 billion question. For 10 years, hundreds of geological surveys, earthquake simulations, hurricane models, and even military attack scenarios were conducted. Finally, by 2016, Virginia made a historic decision to build two new tunnels, 
each with two lanes, running parallel to the existing route beneath the ocean floor. By 2020, an official contract was signed with the Hampton Roads Connector Partners, an international alliance including Flatiron, U.S., Dragados, Spain, Vinci, and Doden, France, a true Avengers team of global construction giants. Their mission? Expand the entire I-64 corridor by more than 60 miles, replace 27 bridges, and construct two massive artificial islands in the middle of the ocean. As you can guess, the cost was staggering. Nearly 4 billion US dollars. That's enough to rebuild 10 stadiums the size of Wembley, or to power a small city with solar energy for 50 years. This became the largest infrastructure project in Virginia's history. Over 3,000 workers have been laboring around the clock seven days a week. About 92% of the funding came from HR TAC, with the rest covered by state and federal sources. The new tunnels are built to withstand a once-in-a-century flood, using salt-resistant concrete materials designed to last more than 120 years, matching the engineering standards of mega-projects in Seattle and Boston. And to turn this multi-billion dollar design into reality, Americans needed a true mechanical beast. Mary, named after Mary Winston Jackson, the first black female aerospace engineer at NASA who once worked in Hampton. This colossal tunnel boring machine was built by Germany's Herrenknecht, often called the Rolls Royce of tunnel boring companies. Imagine this, Mary stretches over 450 feet long, roughly the length of a football field, stands as tall as a four-story building and weighs 10.4 million pounds, heavier than seven Airbus A380s combined. Her cutter head measures 46 feet in diameter, delivers 27 million pound inches of torque and produces 56,000 kilowatts of power, about 40 times stronger than a modern locomotive engine. Just the manufacturing and shipping alone cost $70 million, the price of two luxury super yachts. It took 14 months to build Mary in Germany, four months to ship her halfway around the globe by sea, another four months to assemble, and six more months of calibration before she was ready to dig. By 2023, Mary officially began chewing through the seabed beneath Hampton Roads Bay. But beneath those waves lies soft quaternary silt and Yorktown sand, geological layers as fragile as flour. Just a few inches of misalignment could cause the entire tunnel to collapse like a sandcastle. To counter this, Mary was equipped with a mix shield system capable of injecting high-pressure mud to stabilize the tunnel face, essentially creating a self-generated artificial skin that protects itself while digging. Each time Mary advanced a few feet, 1,191 reinforced concrete rings, each about 20 inches thick, were installed right behind her, forming what looked like the massive steel backbone of a sea monster. Inside the tunnel, Hundreds of engineers worked 24 hours a day in a hyperbaric environment where the pressure was 10 times higher than normal. Radar continuously scanned every inch, underwater robots inspected each joint, and even a tiny leak could let over 100,000 cubic feet of seawater rush in within minutes. To rotate the 5 million pound cutter head, engineers used nitrogen slide pads, a low-friction technology once exclusive to Europe. This was the first time in U.S. history such a system had ever been used to bore a parallel undersea tunnel, and only the second application worldwide. Then, after more than a year of relentless work, on April 17, 2024, Mary finally broke through the last wall of soil. Cheers erupted in the control room. Engineers hugged each other. Tears rolled down mud-streaked faces. After nearly 70 years since the first tunnel, Virginia had once again gone beneath the sea. But the journey wasn't over. Mary now had to rotate 180 degrees underground to start drilling the second parallel tunnel. That single maneuver took six months of disassembly, rotation, and precise recalibration. Why so long? 
because even a half-inch error could let millions of tons of ocean pressure crush the tunnel like an aluminum can. By 2025, Mary was back in motion. Her cutter head had been polished, sensors recalibrated, and her crew more experienced than ever. The pace remained cautious, just a few feet per day, but every operation behind her ran like clockwork. Each 20-inch thick concrete ring installed immediately after the drill, and the excavated mud pumped back to the Catherine plant for treatment. According to projections, by 2027, Hampton Roads will feature four parallel tunnels with eight lanes in total. The two old tunnels reconfigured for one-way traffic, and the two new ones handling the opposite flow. The system's total capacity is expected to reach around 150,000 vehicles per day. Above the sea, two new artificial islands are taking shape. On land, the I-64 highway is being widened, and long-standing traffic bottlenecks are finally being untangled after decades of congestion. In front of you lies the North Island, the rising gateway toward Hampton. Picture a parking stop in the middle of the ocean that grows larger by the day. The old island has been massively expanded. New control towers and ventilation plants are being built, and additional bridge ramps are being added to separate traffic before vehicles plunge into the tunnel. The fill volume reaches 1.6 million cubic yards, most of it recycled dredged material, roughly the same as 480 Olympic-sized swimming pools. From a drone's view, the North Island looks like a giant funnel. Cars roll down from the bridge, dive 1.5 miles beneath the sea, then burst back into daylight on the opposite shore. Further south is the South Island, the mechanical heart of the entire project. Born in 1957, with an area of about 15 acres, it has now doubled in size to carry tremendous weight. Mary's launch platform, electrical substations, storage yards for concrete segments, and living quarters for 200 workers. The entire island surface is coated in thick asphalt, strong enough to bear thousands of tons of heavy machinery rolling across it day and night. Yet amid this world of steel and concrete, life finds its rhythm. Since the 1980s, this has been the nesting site for nearly 25,000 seabirds, including the royal tern, a rare species that makes up 98% of Virginia's entire colony. Conservation laws are strict. No nest destruction, no blasting, no construction near nesting zones. So how could they protect the schedule while saving the island's residents? The solution sounded crazy, but it worked. Engineers built a new artificial island using dredged material, creating dry, sandy ground and deployed trained dogs acting as predators, patrolling by whistle and GPS signals to gently guide the birds toward their new home. Biological teams flew drones to monitor movements, marked quiet zones, and erected soft barriers to reduce noise. The result? Roughly 2,000 nests relocated safely with no bird casualties. After solving the ecological challenge, the project faced another tougher test, the memory of past disasters. In 2009, a massive storm forced seawater into the tunnel, paralyzing traffic and trapping around 200,000 vehicles, like beads stuck inside a glass tube. Imagine your fuel gauge hitting empty, your phone signal fading, and a long red line of brake lights motionless ahead. Then in 2016, Two cars caught fire inside the tunnel. Nearly 80 people had to crawl on the pavement, gasping for air beneath thick black smoke because there were no cross-tunnel escape routes. For anyone who lived through that, it was an experience never to be repeated. That's why the new tunnel was designed with one guiding rule. Never let a single mistake turn into a disaster. Every 1,000 feet, an emergency exit connects the twin tubes. Lifelines that allow people to escape smoke and fire within minutes. Overhead, a powerful smoke extraction system and round-the-clock toxic gas sensors stand guard, while smart LED lights automatically shift to guide evacuees toward exits in an emergency. Beneath your feet, 
pumps capable of moving over half a million gallons per minute are ready to swallow any incoming floodwaters. Now, as the HRBT expansion takes shape beneath Virginia's Bay, what people see isn't just a new tunnel. It's the embodiment of the American spirit of perseverance, the courage to dig through the seabed and confront nature itself to build a path toward the future. From the shaky ferry boats of the past to today's $4 billion megastructure, this is a journey of ambition and faith. So what do you think? Can humanity keep digging deeper, crossing oceans, and perhaps one day tunneling beneath entire continents? Share your thoughts below and don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss more incredible stories from around the world.